Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Inget Zoom Series 28. Today, our guest is Dr. Adam Akbash. Dr. Adam Akbash holds his PhD from University of York, uh, UK, and he finished uh, his PhD in 2014. Now he works at the Department of English Language Teaching at Agius University, Turkey, as you know. <laughs> he has several national and international publications and conference presentations. He is very, very active, in fact. His research interests include discourse analysis and language teaching, written discourse analysis, teaching academic writing, language curriculum design and evaluation, and contrastive rhetoric. His session title today is something that we have never tackled with before, so I'm really excited about it. The title is Moral Code of Academia, Academic Integrity and Avoiding Plagiarism. Thank you, dear Arda Mojam, for accepting to be our guest uh, this evening. I'm really excited to have you as our uh, guest speaker. Uh, and welcome again. The screen is all yours. OK. Um, thank you very much uh, for introducing me to the audience, Aida Mojam. Good ev evening, everyone. Aida Mojam and dear Inget you know, audience. Uh, it's my honor to be here, actually. Uh, tonight, I will be talking about a rapidly developing topic of discussion, not just from a technological point of view, but also um, from an ethical uh, one. So before I start, can I just ask everyone to leave me an emoji from the chat box so that we can start interacting with every one of you while I'm sharing my screen. So just... Uh, Leave, leave me an emoji telling your, you know, emotions these days or today. Okay, I can see some, you know, hearts or smiling faces. Great. Um, okay. Hello, Melta Mojam. It's nice to see you. Um, let me get rid of this. Okay. Um, so can I just check whether you can see my screen right now? Okay, great. Um, so let me just briefly introduce myself as well, who is Arda Makbash. Uh, I did my BA at the University of uh, Sajuk University, uh, which I finished in 2008, and I got a scholarship from Ministry of National Education to do my MA and PhD abroad. Um, I did my MA in TESOL at the University of York, and straight after this, I started my PhD again at the University of York, which I finished in 2014. Uh, I'm a musician playing different kinds of instruments like balama, guitar, violin, and bandage. And I'm a passionate chess player. Uh, I played for my university in the UK as well. Uh, I'm into photography. Uh, this is one of my award-winning uh, you know, um, shots. This is me in the eye of an owl. Um, and I'm a researcher in the area of uh, discourse analysis and corpus linguistics and teaching language. And I published books and chapters internationally, and I'm a co-organizer of MAC conference series, which I uh, organized in 2017, 19, and 2021. Okay, um, um, let me share the outline of my talk. I will start with the uh, introduction to academic integrity um, and academic dishonesty will be the second stop. Uh, and we will be talking about what can or cannot be accepted in the university setting. And maybe this is the highlight of today's talk. What is plagiarism? Um, examples of plagiarism from real world and consequences. Uh, ways of integrating others' work into ours. So I think it's time to start. Um, okay. And before I start, let me just... Uh, <laughs> Okay, to Fiden Fidentinus, the book which you are reading aloud is mine, Fidentinus, but while you read it so badly, it begins to be yours. Marshall, uh, this is the quote from, uh, look, you know, um, hundreds of years ago. So uh, the, the, uh, the concept of plagiarism, which goes back to, you know, uh, you know centuries ago, 
This is coming from one of the uh, works of Marshall. Okay, uh, so before we start, let's have an activity on Answer Garden. Uh, but I really want everybody who are who is using uh, you know the computer to join this one. Let me find the um, just a second. Um, here we go. Sorry, the link here. Okay, the link is. Uh, here. So I really want you to join this uh, if you are using your computer, of course. Um, so let me also go to the website. So the question is very simple, actually. Um, I hope you can see this. Here we go. Okay. The question is, Write down positive or negative connotations of the word integrity for you. So let me um, okay, honesty, ethics, ownership. Um, let me um, refresh honesty again. Contain inter internalization, courage, um, components. Okay, so it's a little bit small that I can see. Let me zoom in. Copyright, uniformity, respect. So I like that one. Thank you. Um, okay, mixture, ownership, combination, professionalism. Okay, trustworthy, disguise, morality. Um, so we have some um, some of the key terms that I will also talk about in today's um, seminar. Okay, so this is the last time I'm refreshing it. But I don't know, Jam, I'm just um, shocked to see that honesty is in the middle of the uh, you know page. So many people are interested in honesty while defining uh, you know the connotations of the word integrity. Um, so let me go back to my slide here. Um, okay. Uh, so based on the definition uh, coming from Oxford Dictionary, integrity actually means um, the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. So uh, the examples here are of great importance, personal, professional, artistic integrity to behave with integrity. And we call a man of great integrity, right? For some people, academic dishonesty or plagiarism might not be a serious infraction or violation uh, if these people don't regard individual cre creativity or authorship. Um, and, you know, building a culture of academic integrity in a society is not an easy task. Uh, but with the help of institutional policies based on principles of academic integrity, uh, this could simply transform individuals um, and society into something that we really desire. Okay, uh, here is the question. Can you give an example of integrity? Let me just check the uh, chat box if you have something in your mind. Um, what what things come to your mind uh, when I talk about integrity? Can you just write it down to chat box? And while you are doing this, I'm going to ask you another question. Here is my example. You are in the market for shopping and you notice that the cashier has forgotten to scan some of the items you bought and put them into the bag. That's your bag, of course. Uh, what would you do? How would you react to this? Uh, can someone um, open the mic or uh, write it to the chat box? How would you, would you return the items, warn them? Okay, so I don't know, Jam, you would warn. Um, but I don't know, Jam, you're writing it to the waiting room chat box, I think. So maybe you can change it to everybody. What about others? Uh, would you like to join this? How would you react? Of course, warn and return, Nordana Jam. You would return, you would inform the cashier, um, you would warn them. Um, so it's like individual integrity. 
okay, people would warn them. Um, would you um, like to consider yourself uh, being interested in the amount of money that you would pay uh, if the cashier, you know, so I don't know, Jim's nodding. So, um, okay. So here is uh, Diocto from Montreal. Uh, can, can everybody tell me whether you are aware of this or not? You can write plus or minus, Diocto. Uh, let me see. So Gamzo doesn't know the octo. Okay, it's good that people are not aware. Fatma Tokyo's okay. Okay, uh, so the octo is a piece of art in uh, Concordia University, Montreal, which requires two kilometers an hour of wind to be active. And with the help of the wind, some parts of the uh, sculpture start to move. And what is more, it works in near complete silence. Let me just show you uh, the video, and I think you will be able to hear it. This is a symbolic greeting uh, sculpture. And you can see how unique and how original it is. This is the artist. Okay. I don't know, Jam, did you like it? I mean, the, the view, that's, that's great, right? Okay. So this is all stainless steel kinetic wind sculpture by Anthony Howey. Um, okay. Let me just, yeah, I know you enjoyed the view, but I have to, you know, here we go. Um, here we go. Um, the next one. I don't know, Jam, this is coming from Hayalili Mersin, Mersin Metropolitan Municipality. And this is the one, let me. is the one coming from Mersin actually. So you may um, question yourself why I'm just sharing those two pieces of art. Uh, Di Octo versus Hayalili, that's the starting point for me. I know this is not academic at all, but um, do you have any guess uh, about the original one? Uh, you can write Di Octo or Hayalili uh, to a chat box. The octo. Okay. So I don't know why they preferred, you know, the octo hojam, but there might be something wrong with the Turkish society in this context. Don't know. Okay. Um, let me talk about this a little bit more. I know this is Turkish, but I've already prepared something in English. How we somehow got wind, pun intended, of the situation and had his lawyers file so it. Hovi contends that Hayalil is a copy of his work, the Octo. In court, both the municipality and the park can blame Aryan for the situation, but the response was a little bit, you know, awkward. In a response, Aryan declared that our work runs with a motor, whereas Hovi's is wind, wind powered. Hovi's state statue has 16 wings and ours has 30, but that was not enough for the experts to come to a decision uh, that the municipality paid almost 1 million Turkish liras to the original um, you know, uh, artist. So you can see this is the consequence that you may face if you attempt to um, you know, copy an original work. Um, I know this is not a, a great example, but I had to share it. Hoca, now, um, after sharing the, the definition of integrity, I'm going to move on to academic integrity here. Uh, linking the definition of 
and meaning of integrity to academia. Uh, I think we are all coming from this, right? It is clear that academic integrity is simply ethical and moral actions or values to be followed in academic activities. Uh, so people would like to connect academic integrity to plagiarism or vice versa, but academic integrity is a lot broader compared to plagiarism. In other words, academic integrity is linked to being honest. You remember the, the word um, which also popped out uh, in relation to any sort of scholarly practices. Now, the question, what kinds of scholarly practices does the concept of academic integrity evoke? Any idea? Do we have any idea? I'm going to check the chat box or uh, you can open your mic and, you know, give me an example of academic integrity here. Um, okay. So I can see that some people are writing plagiarism, respecting others' ideas, uh, proper quotation from Egypt, Yildirim. Um, Okay, copyright laws from Mark. Thank you, Mark. Uh, original ideas expressed with rigor, citing the source of inspiration, citation, paraphrasing, giving references using citations. So we, we have uh, great answers here. Um, okay, so um, here are some of the scholarly practices um, I can share with you. Avoiding cheating in exams or assignments. Uh, following academic conventions and standards, which are in line with your institutional policies. Avoiding plagiarism. Okay. Fairness and honesty in research. Uh, Hojam, I also need to tell you that I'm benefiting from a, a, a MOOC uh, in which academic integrity is also, you know, um, introduced to the uh, participants. So I have already adopted some of the cases from their uh, original work. So it's known that all healthy academic communities are built upon and maintained via the following uh, values, honesty, respect, responsibility, fairness, trust, and courage. This is coming from Fishman 2012. I don't know, Jam, can I just go back and delete Fishman 2012 so that I can pretend, pretend that all those six values belong to me so I can rediscover America? Or should I? Yeah, I can try this. Thank you. But uh, should I also give the credit to Fishman uh, to make sure that uh, you know I'm aware of, uh, you know, uh, Fishman's work, and I share it with you. Considering the fact that you are part of an academic community, you are obliged to act in accordance with these fundamental values. Now, what do these values mean to you? I'm not going to, you know, ask, you know, questions, but this is the one that I'm really after. Um, be honest, have you ever cheated during an exam? How does that make, you know, how, how does that make you feel right now? Can you just, if Sadato Jam says yes, I don't know Jam says yes. How do you feel now? Ashamed? Yeah, Sadato Jam says I learned a lot. Great. <laughs> but this is not a great example, right? You wanted Esmoja, but you couldn't. Oh, I know there are, you know, a group of, there's a group of people who, who try to do this, but they can't achieve. Dileko Jam, you say yes. Ashamed then, Sadato Jam. In history lesson I did is one overt example. There might be some other violations of academic integrity. Yes, sharing information. Great. So I'm sure that some of the people, some people here would be really ashamed if they did something. Um, you would feel guilt. Okay. Now here is the case one. You're about to finish your university education and in order to graduate, you're supposed to complete a research project in a small team by preparing a comprehensive review of educational issues in Turkey. In your group, you are given the responsibilities to complete, writing up a proposal and researching key terms and research. Um, preparation of the formal presentation. Now, that's the question I really want you to write down at least A, B, C, or D. I have four options. 
The first one, uh, how can you demonstrate academic integrity in this project? Asking your teammates to complete your parts for the project as you do, do not have enough time for this. You know, people might be quite busy, so they may not have enough time. And uh, let me see if I have any A here. Encouraging teammates to choose the pers best person here to complete all the tasks to get a higher mark. So that's sensible, but I don't know whether you would be involved in this. Persuading all teammates to agree with your proposal to duplicate a previous project completed in Zimbabwe. So the lecture, lecturer wouldn't be you know, aware of this project in Zimbabwe maybe. And the last one, contributing to the project as is expected by dedicating time and effort as required. So what, what is your answer, A, B, C, or D? I'm not going to accuse any of you. Okay, D, of course. Um, thank you. Second, Adam, I'm think. sorry, yes. I, I just no did something wrong. No worries. Sorry, no sorry. Worries. That's fine. Okay, surely D. Great. Um, so if you have cho chosen D here, the correct answer shows that you intend to commit yourself to shared responsibility for this group work. Great, but if you ever consider A, B, or C, there is something in, in you, but I can't really explain it right now. Okay, this is the second case. Uh, you are giving the, sorry, uh, yeah, you are given the potential topics for the end of term assignment for education, and you suddenly get excited after you remember one of your friends mentioned that she had submitted a paper about one of the topics in the list last year. So you uh, can buy the time by asking that person to share the, the paper. Now question, which of the following action indicates that you are completely acting in, in accordance with academic integrity? A, changing the title of your friend's work and writing a new introduction so that the lecturer would think you write something genuine. B, choosing a new topic from the list and completing the assignment. C, revising half of your friend's essay and submitting it as yours. And D, waiting until the last minute of the submission and submitting your friend's assignment as yours without changing anything. So I know um, it's really hard to decide the correct answer, but I know that people will be giving the answer B here just because it's the correct one. The correct answer is consistent with the values covered previously, uh, fairness, honest, and trust. Now, uh, this is the third case. Ali, Zeynep, and Hatija are classmates and taking advanced reading and writing course in, the, in their department. Ali is a talented chess player who plays for the university team as well. However, Considering the approaching tournament among the university chess teams in Turkey, he cannot find enough time to complete his writing assignment as he was also absent last week. Now, I think Zeynep and Hatija are also in our session right now. Um, and how can they help him? The question, how can they demonstrate academic integrity? They give an electronic copy of their own assignments so that he can mix them uh, to create something new, uh, so the blending. Um, Ali asks them to write a short assignment for him that he can complete later on. They recommend relevant course materials so that Ali can understand what he's supposed to do. Um, they recommend a website where Ali can pay somebody to write his assignment. <laughs> So the, the, the options might be quite funny here, but I know that you will be giving me the answer C here, um, which also um, shows that they help Ali by providing the recommended course reading to support his understanding of the writing assignment. And the values uh, uh, you know, highlighted here are honesty, responsibility, and respect. Okay, now, I'm going to talk about different interpretations of integrity, especially in, in academic uh, you know, world. The relationship between integrity and the ownership of ideas uh, or work 
may change from one context to another, thanks to the expectations in the context. Now, if you consider a small team in a workplace and they work on a project that results in a piece of written work, which we call co-authored, is this acceptable? So two or three people work on the same project uh, and they are already shared uh, the responsibility. Um, for this concept, context and scenario, yes, it is acceptable. Do we have any academicians here who can share how they collaborate with others in carrying out research and writing an article? Hojam, I think we have some people here if they are available and turn on their cameras or microphone if they would like to say something. Um, how do you collaborate with other uh, you know, researchers? Anybody? Uh, is, so Oyojam says, this is a great experience. Um, I think, so I've recently collaborated with some of the academicians here in, in the session, like Betil Ojam, Ahmed Ojam. Um, so I can't see the whole list here. Um, okay, uh, here I can suggest the use of Google Docs as well to collaborate with authors living in different places but work on the same document at different times by producing and leaving comments. So I've already contacted uh, Hatim Ojem. This is one of the recent papers that I published. So you can see the, the version history here. On uh, August 27, uh, we Hatim Ojam changed something and before this like an hour ago I changed something else so we worked on the paper together we collaborated and you can even see that we uh, you know contributed to the paper uh, equally so we published it so this is just an example. Um, now think of a group uh, of students in, in a university context and they are all expected to produce individual work on what they are working on unless they have been guided to work in a group. Uh, example here, you're asked to submit individual work, but you complete your task with a friend and submit as if, it did, if, as if you did it on your own. Uh, this case is very similar to what we have seen in the previous one, but this time you are not co-authoring just because you are told, but you are doing it for your own sake. And this is not acceptable, of course, no. It could be considered as academic misconduct and plagiarism unless you explicitly indicate that it is not your individual work only. So this is also involving some sort of respect to yourself and your co-author. Everybody in university context is essentially engaged in learning, teaching and research activities to some extent. Therefore, certain values, which I've already shared or standards are expected of everybody to follow. Um, so I'm going to reveal one of the biggest question, um, questions in your mind. That is, Hojam, how can someone come up with something that no one else has ever thought of it? That's the question. The answer is simple. You are only required to produce your own work in your own words, not with others. Um, and here I need to share something with you. You are more than welcome to borrow ideas, words, or even sentences that have been expressed by others, providing that you clearly acknowledge where you get them. That is what we call referencing the original source. But the biggest misconception here would be, Hojam, is it me or them? that I report here while I present you know, their ideas or work. Of course, it's you, since you're supposed to reflect your own understanding of their ideas or work with which your reader will gain access to them as well. I'm going to come back to this later on in the following slides. Now, uh, you know, narrowing it down to academic dishonesty, any type of cheating in relation to a formal academic exercise can be defined as uh, academic dishonest, dishonesty. It's easy to define, but it's not so easy to grasp. I have been struggling to teach uh, this kind of concept to my students uh, for the past uh, six years here. 
It's therefore advisable to focus on what can be considered unacceptable in university and academic context, like cheating during an exam. That is one of the things. Presenting work of others as if you had done it. Being part of an unacceptable group work or collaboration. Hojam, I need to share this one. Uh, this is an article published in 2015. And it, uh, I'm not sure whether I, I can share this, but uh, let me just click on this. If it pops up, yeah, it's, it's here. Hojam, the original article is eight pages long, but you can see it's uh, 33 pages. The rest of the 24 pages uh, include the authors. There are over 5,000 authors in this article. Can you, can you see the big number here, 5,000 um, researchers? Let me just show you this. Okay, these are the researchers. I don't know, Jim, can we find a place for us here? This is a very well-written uh, you know, research uh, product. So you can see a number of people working in the project. So in Turkish context, they call it, I don't know how, how I can translate it. Danaya girer gibi makaleye girmek. I don't know. I don't know how to express this in English, but you just uh, combine yourself with others and then you just start writing. But there are some projects requiring uh, the, the, the support and help of every individual in the project. And this is something genuine. But I also know cases in Turkish context, they're calling, do you have any paper that I, you can include my name in it, on it, right? Some, some professors who are also doing this. This is not, um, you know, um, respectable at all. Okay, receiving and asking for more help than is allowed is also another, you know, unacceptable case, case in, in academic context. Pretending to have an idea or work that belongs to others. Um, so let me just share this. I know a case where the teacher first um, opens his own article published in 2018 and tells the students, you see, I've written X is Y. And then the teacher opens another article, which was published in 1940s. And he, uh, uh, you know, reports that, you see, that person also uh, talks about the same thing that I'm talking here. But the problem is that that person produced the work like 70 years ago. Um, failing to acknowledge sources used is also another unacceptable case using the presentation or work of your students to share with others. Um, I know of, uh, some cases um, you know, uh, related to this. Making false, false claims, misinterpreting, making up data and references, changing or omitting data to reach a better outcome, you know, statistically significant difference. If you can't reach it, so you may just delete some of the data set you have, and then oh, here you go. And plagiarism is also included, one of the unacceptable uh, you know, issues here. Plagiarism, uh, simply it can be attributed to uh, presenting ideas, words, or work of others with no acknowledgement. That's the basic definition. Um, let me, okay. Um, Modifying other people's work with no intention of acknowledging this, this is also called plagiarism. Resubmitting what belongs to you as if it were new. And this is something new. Maybe some of you are not even aware of this. This is called self-plagiarism. So you can't really pretend uh, you produce something new by using um, a text which you uh, have written like 15 years ago. Um, so this is also called uh, plagiarism. Um, because I'm coming from a corpus linguistics perspective, you know, um, I also uh, prepare something. I search plagiarism in uh, Google Books, Engram, 
viewer, and I found out that something happened in 1980s, and then we had a lot of mentions of plagiarism in the books stored in Google. And, you know, this is a huge database, including books like from 1800s to 2019. So can you guess what happened, um, you know, in 1980s? The internet, the technology. I think this is um, the, um, the, the issue here. Uh, with, with the rise of computing and growing, uh, you know, through 1980s, the world was transitioning from um, analog to digital, uh, you know, um, um, let's say information presentation, and that caused something in the society. Um, let me, oops, what happened? Okay. I think uh, there is something wrong here. Let me just hold on. Um, it's here. Yeah, this one. Yeah, let's get rid of this. Okay. And can't I just come up with something that has been previously thought by others, but I didn't know it. Actually, this is a rhetorical question. I'm not expecting you to answer this. So um, of course you can, yeah, it is you who should make sure it has, hasn't been expressed before. So that's why you need to read what is relevant to you in your field. Now, here is another question some of you might uh, you know, wonder, intentional or unintentional? Is there any difference? Actually, uh, there's not much difference between them, intentional or not. It's not acceptable in university setting. Uh, I don't know, John, let me clarify what I mean by uh, unintentional plagiarism. It could be defined as something which occurs um, when an author fails to acknowledge um, the source being used um, unconsciously. But there are some also other cases where people, uh, you know, uh, argue that they forgot it um, and they did not have any kind of intention. So it's really hard to differentiate those cases. Therefore, I wouldn't really recommend um, treating something unintentional. Okay. Um, there are some types of plagiarism. Um, this is coming from Brett's and Ilya, 2018. But I'm not going to, you know, explain every single one of them. But verbatim is, uh, is the first one. Uh, I'm not sure whether you can see it clearly, but let me uh, quote it. It's word for word copying of large passages without inline acknowledgement of the source. The second one is sham paraphrasing. You copy the material verbatim from the text and the source acknowledged, acknowledged in line, but represented as you paraphrased it. So you are not paraphrasing it, but you pretend that you have paraphrased it. And the third one is inadequate paraphrasing, which I'm going to share uh, with you in a moment some, with some real cases. You uh, try to, you attempt to paraphrase the text, but it's not uh, thoroughly paraphrased and it is very close to the original source and you try to imitate the original one. And the last one is illicit paraphrasing. You uh, paraphrase the material from the text without inline acknowledgement of the source. And we also have Cryptomnesia here, which is unconscious plagiarism, but still uh, there is not much uh, research um, it, helping us understand whether this is real or not. Here uh, is the definition from MLA Handbook for Writers of Research Papers. Um, the plagiarism sometimes happens because researchers do not keep precise records of their reading. And by the time they return to their notes, they have forgotten what, whether their summaries and paraphrases contain quoted material that is poorly marked or unmarked. So 
So that this might be the reason why people unintentionally plagiarize. Recording on the uh, quotations is the most reliable method of note taking in substantial research pr projects. Therefore, we have to learn how to take the notes in order to stay away from plagiarism to some extent. Um, here is something very heartbreaking. Uh, uh, some 34% of academic theses in Turkey have high plagiarism rates according to a report by Education Policy Research and Application Center of Istanbul's Boğaziçi University published in 2016. And you can imagine the, the case um, in 2020 is not much different. Oh, sorry. Um, and this is something which I was quite surprised to see. 162 theses of uh, 477 had high level of plagiarism. And I, I don't really think that this case is just relevant to Turkish context. I was just chatting to Salim Ojan, which is also one of the guests, uh, who is also one of the guests here today. And he also mentioned that uh, there are some countries in Europe um, which are worse than Turkey. And Dr. Zia Toprak in 2016 states that, quote, unfortunately, there are serious ethical issues in our country. Certainly, there are many who unknowingly plagiarize. The findings of the research focus mainly on the thesis that, are, that have high levels of plagiarism. So clearly, plagiarism is at serious levels. We're not talking about a few lines or a paragraph. It was done deliberately, indicating a serious ethical issue, unquote. Now, should uh, the writer be punished here? What are the consequences? Those are the you know, questions that we may answer here. Um, the cons one of the consequences would be destroyed academic reputation. Um, you know, it is, uh, the consequences of plagiarism have been reported uh, in the world of academia in every context. Um, and if you are uh, scared with the plagiarism allegations, it's really hard to you know, um, uh, make yourself clean um, and publishing, you know, this is an ongoing process in academia and people will not trust you again. Uh, this is coming from uh, one of the studies uh, Salim Hoca carried out uh, with um, uh, Pektash in 2017 and reported the reasons of plagiarism by uh, asking like 135 participants at university concept, context. They are not just students, but there are also some academicians in it. Um, let me zoom in uh, so that you can also see some kind of reasons here. Lecturer will not care. This is really high, more than 50%. Uh, some people say, you know, run out of time. So time management is also an issue if you intend to plagiarize. Um, unaware of penalties. This is highly important. If we don't, uh, you know, introduce the penalties uh, in the case of an you know, plagiarism attempt, then students will not know what consequences are waiting for them. Therefore, they will just commit uh, plagiarism to some extent. And you can see that over 90%, uh, you know, reported that it's easy to copy from the internet rather than producing something unique. And there are some people who believe that plagiarism is not wrong. Actually, uh, in 1970s or 1980s, there were people who supported this idea, but it, not in today's world, because we are trying to create um, academic, uh, you know, uh, conventions, and the quality of information will be in line with the um, uh, the originality of the work. Um, let me just move on to the next slide. What triggers plagiarism? According to the research carried out uh, by Retz and Ilya, uh, the, the triggers of plagiarism uh, would include lack of skills, um, time restrictions, 
inability to produce your own ideas or expressions. So you just copy and paste what other people said. Not taking uh, referencing seriously, um, knowing that your lecturer would not be aware of the fact that you are plagiarizing. You would have the desire to look cool uh, by using some other people's ideas and present them as if uh, they were yours. No intrinsic motivation would be another trigger for plagiarism, uh, especially in uh, you know, COVID-19 um, you know, situation. Uh, I know that some students are struggling and they don't have enough time to complete their assignments and they just submit something uh, with a lot of plagiarized text. Now, uh, if we talk about some of the ways to overcome uh, any case of plagiarism, we can refer back to some strategies. We can uh, raise awareness, like um, um, holding some um, series or conferences uh, like this one. Um, you can also teach citation rules um, to your students, to your, um, let's say, colleagues uh, to stay away from plagiarism. You can also use some real examples uh, to help them understand uh, how they can stay away from uh, plagiarism. And this is something very important. If you uh, make plagiarists fail, you will also uh, give some um, you know, moral lessons to others. Developing students' self-confidence to support them, they can achieve something. And uh, if you prioritize original opinions, uh, and, and if you respect them, this is going to solve the problem. Um, and this is the last one, teaching how, how to use plagiarism checkers. I know some people may not, may not access um, some of those plagiarism checkers like Turnitin, Authenticate, but I think Intelnet, Intel.net is one of the free sources. It was free as far as I'm concerned. Now, Let's quickly look at one of the cases and you decide whether Dennis plagiarized or not. Dennis finds some useful information on the internet for her assignment topic. She rewrites the information in her own words and includes details of where the information came from by acknowledging or referencing the original source and author. Now, can you please tell me whether this is considered as plagiarism? Of course, no. Thank you, Mark. Sergeant. Because uh, you can see that Dennis acknowledged the source, uh, the information um, related to the original one. If the referencing is done properly, this seems to be fine. It's because then Dennis managed to rewrite and use required referencing to accomplish or show academic honesty. Um, one of the challenges of good scholarship is to take what has been done, said, or argued in the field and incorporating them into your own work in an original way. That is how we can uh, avoid plagiarism as well. There are many options that exist for incorporating what has been done, said, or argued by others into your work. So the first one would be an easy peasy one, quoting directly. So you put the quotation marks around the words and identify the source at the end. So it's done. The second one would be paraphrasing. You put the information into your own words and identify the source. It is a little bit harder than uh, you know, quoting directly because if you can't uh, you know, accomplish the paraphrasing properly, this might, may also end up with plagiarism to some extent, if you just look at the example I just provide you here. Uh, this is coming from a student paper um, submitted to me. And clearly the, the student benefited from one of the texts written by Masruddin, Carmila. I have no idea who they are, but the, the, the student clearly changed something here, noticeable, it and can, and then I just noticed that noticeable is misspelled here. So the student here misspelled the word and then uh, she stayed away, um, you know, um, 
plagiarism to some extent, but it's not the, uh, the um, actually uh, success here. So here you can see um, uh, inappropriate paraphrasing, and there is no mention of the, the source, original source, and this is a problematic case. The quotation, uh, if you tend to quote uh, the sources directly a lot, this may also create a sort of uh, problem for your text. If you would like to create a reader-friendly text, I would not recommend you to use you know, direct quotations all the time, okay? Um, when you have a source which you cannot express better by paraphrasing, you can go for a quote directly. So that's my criterion, Hoja. If I cannot express it better, so I choose to uh, quote directly. But if there is a way, uh, then I can uh, you know, paraphrase it. Um, so I, I try to paraphrase and give the, uh, you know, acknowledge the source. Here is an example. All in Lancaster 2014 stated that, I know some people may be quite far away from the concept of hedging and boosting, but let me uh, report the, the quotation here. Hedging and boosting allow writers to express more or less commitment to their claims, page 159. Which part of the sentence belong to All and Lancaster 2014? I'm sure you can identify it quite easily. Um, the one that you see between the quotation marks uh, belongs to the original authors. But the one belongs to the author, the, the one who has written this text or sentence, um, is the part which is shorter than the you know, quote, quoted material. All and Lancaster 2014 stated that. Uh, actually, it was me who did this. Um, now, how often can you code directly? The answer to this question is a little bit complex, but it really depends. Uh, when the code is a relevant one and a well-placed one, it suggests that you can make the connection between the author's ideas and your own ideas. So you can go for uh, direct quotation. On top of this, it's highly vital for you to talk about the relevance of the quote in your own words, as in the example below. I'm quoting from my, my thesis here. Uh, so I have already uh, presented this sentence. By using therefore, I'm, I'm uh, you know, uh, reporting my audience that I trust their claim and I use it as a you know, uh, starting a departure point for, for creating my own argument. And my own argument is why we need to um, analyze interpersonal functions. So interpersonal functions uh, go back to hedging and boosting devices, which I cited, uh, you know, from all and Lancaster's, uh, you know, work. So here is a paraphrased, uh, you know, um, text. Now, in paraphrasing, you put the information into your own words and identify the source, that's it. Um, it is sometimes great to hear your voice when you report something from work of others. To put simply, paraphrasing is to present ideas from other, another source in your own words, yes. But the problem is that if you don't have uh, the required skills, you may put your own work, work, uh, sorry, work into risk. Now, uh, let's have a quick example. So you still remember the uh, original sentence, right? I'm trying to work on the same, uh, you know, um, example. That's coming from Old and Lancaster. If you paraphrase in the like in the following sentence, hedges and boosters enable authors to signal commitment to their claims. You can, when you rate it over ten, I can give only two because it's not really different from the original source. If you just use a synonym, that doesn't make you a successful paraphraser, okay? So you can look at this one. Hedges, rather than using hedging, it's not a good idea. Boosters, rather than boosting, it's not enough. Enable, allow, you just use a thesaurus and then you change allow to enable, but that doesn't work. So here, 
uh, you need to change the syntax and you need to use um, a different, um, you know, a syntactical, uh, syntactic distribution in the sentence. Here, uh, I've already paraphrased this sentence. The writers could signal a particular level of commitment to what they assert with the help of hedging and boosting. This is a lot better than the previous one. Um, so uh, let me share this example. I like this one. The original source is already here and Meltem used it in her essay. Even though music does not depict portray, so just one word changed, something tangible rather than using concrete matters in films. Um, so you, you can uh, see where I'm trying to go right now. It's not a well paraphrased you know, text. This is also considered plagiarism to some extent because you just uh, failed in paraphrasing and giving the um, acknowledgement of the original source. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'm going too fast and I'm running out of time, but I have some other uh, you know, issues to talk about. Let me just uh, rush a little bit. There are some strategies that you can use in paraphrasing. You can use some synonyms for your work, but do not forget to change the syntactic distribution of the words. Uh, <laughs> I think Matthew used the free paraphrasing tool on the net. Yes, it's my job, that's right. You change the structure of the sentence. You, change, you can change the voice from active to passive or from passive to active. You can change clauses to you know, phrases or vice versa. Um, I really recommend changing the parts of speech. So you can make a verb a noun or other way around. Um, so let me just um, fast forward this bit. Now, Hojan, plagiarism detectors may work better than you would think. Um, and this is one of the student assignments. Basically, Hojan, you're going to see your own work here. And the student, you know, use this. In this regard, there has been a great interest in finding out how the academic writers interact with their intended audience via their academic text. Okay, this was an MA student. I was quite surprised to see that the student synthesized, let me just count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, almost 10 different articles and come up with this idea. So it was very, very, you know, uh, striking for me. But then everything, you know, you know, something triggered. And the student had a synthesis from a range of studies, pulling them together. So I did not really um, feel something good about it. And then I just checked the, the sources. I just copied only the sources and pasted it to the, uh, you know, Google search. And I found my own article. Uh, so I think my student did not find it quite, you know, uh, yeah, comes their job. My student read my own article. So because she is aware that I've carried out the research and I made the synthesis here. So she thought that she has the right to use the same. Uh, yeah, she, she read my paper. Thank you, Ojam. But uh, what a bright student. Um, okay. Um, let me just uh, yeah, fast forward this one. Now, Hojam, to code or not to code? That's the question. So we should know when to code. To the point quotation uh, saves your life. But if you use uh, you know, unnecessary quotation, that is going to be, uh, you know, that's not going to help you create reader-friendly text. So stay away from unnecessary quotations in your text. Now, always go to the original paper. I was using another example, but you know, during our conversation with Aydanojam this, uh, this afternoon, I decided to change it. But this is also a real case, a recent case from my own uh, experience. Um, we are working on a paper 
related to classroom management. And there was something that I really uh, remember, I read somewhere, it, it said, you know, teacher to monopolize control of the discourse. I found the text that I read it. And the text here uh, presented the sentence from Turnberry to Talzit, okay? So I'm trying to make it uh, simple so that everybody can understand. Here, that's already telling me that this text is coming from page 28, uh, published by Turnberry in 2000. But what I found when I just look at the citation, I can uh, see the Turnberry 2000, a dogma for EFL, ITFL issues, whatever. And I just uh, searched this online, but I couldn't find any paragraph including this quoted material at all. Then this paper, this chapter has been published in 2006. What really surprised me was that another paper published in 2016, I think the authors read the previous chapter and they just relied on the report of the previous author. And then they said, Thurnbury 2000, put it this way, exactly the same sentence. They gave the same citation. So I checked it, but there's nothing like this. So here, can you imagine everybody who, uh, who is reading this text and they would like to, rather than finding the original source of Turnberry, they just rely on the authors here, but there's no Turnberry 2000 talking about the following text. So that's the problem for uh, 404 error plagiarism, yeah. Um, make sure you stay away from self-plagiarism. I don't know, Jim, I know that uh, we talked about this. Self-plagiarism is also a serious issue. It is commonly described as recycling or reusing one's own specific words from previously published texts, while it doesn't cross the line of true tact of others' ideas it nonetheless can create issues in the scholarly publishing world. Betul uh, can you imagine you published something in 2000, you know, after 20 years, you would like to use some parts of those, this publication and you use it in your 2021 publication without changing anything. Can you imagine how many different papers you can create by cutting and pasting some of your previous publications? So that's unlimited, right? Let me give you one example from one of my friends. Uh, this case is coming from an MA program in the UK. One of my friends uh, submitted an assignment, an original one, and he used exactly the same paragraph in his dissertation. And it, you know what happened? The committee called him for uh, you know, explaining the case because you can't really self-plagiarize. And you can't really copy and your, paste your own previous, um, let's say, text. And there's another case uh, from a PhD program in the UK. I had a friend who submitted an assignment and then five years later, he decided to make this assignment a paper, a research article without you know, uh, telling that um, this, the previous work also uh, belongs to him. So this is also self-plagiarism. What you can do, you can also refer back to your own original source. Uh, okay. Anytime you're using ideas or materials that have already been written, you have to properly cite and reference those materials, even they belong to you. Make sure you know how to use Turnitin, Identicate, and others. Um, if you want to check your own work, do not add it to any repository. That's something you have to, you know, be careful. Because while you are trying to check your own work, if you submit it to, let's say, turn it to the database, so it's already there. And the second time when this work is checked, um, actually, uh, it's already there. So you, the second time when you check your work, it's going to be you know, signaled, plagiarized. Now, I'm going to give you, you some 
food for thought as well. Plagiarism detectors can only give a similarity report. How about text using a paragraph with three reference back to back from another source talking about the same thing? Why on earth two people talk, talk about exactly the same three references respectively? So this is another issue that you may also consider. Um, this is the uh, you know slide that I finished my talks, actually. I know there were some people uh, interested in the topic. Some people were interested in the animated arrows. Some people looked at the typos. Uh, <laughs> some people had the happy thoughts. Uh, there is no I'm up next, but I hope none of you um, felt that you are in the wrong session, actually. Thank you very much for listening to me. But I have to also tell you that there are something, uh, you know, uh, some things happening in Turkey at the moment. Let me stop share. By the way, you can also contact me from Adam Akbash doctor um, underscore doctor and Adam Akbash from Instagram, or you can email me if you like. Now, let me just stop um, and share this one. Hojam, this is the last part. Um, here we go. Yeah. This is the European Network for Academic Integrity. And this is um, something uh, that I need, needed to share because I'm proud of uh, the head here, who is Salim Moja, and he is also here. And he established the first academic integrity center in Turkey in 2021 in Çanakkale, uh, uh, you know, Çomu. Yeah, Çanakkale on Sigurd Mark University. And I think he is here. Uh, I don't know, Jim, if you allow me, I can just uh, give floor to um, Salim Ojam if he's available to tell us something. Salim Ojam, are you here? Okay, here we go. Uh, hi, Erdem Ojam, Aydın Ojam, and all the others. Erdem Ojam, uh, thank you very much for promoting academic integrity. That's what we need in Turkish academia and calling uh, attention to the importance of text matching software. Uh, it, it is, it is a, a great device that we can benefit. However, uh, I'd like to remind uh, the participants that if uh, we do not develop uh, good policies and uh, some pedagogical issues and do not support text matching software with uh, pedagogy, then it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So it is it is good to uh, have access to Turnitin because it is one of the most powerful tools that we have. But unfortunately, I won't be able to uh, recommend uh, uh, Intalnet. Uh, yeah. I already shared the link uh, of our report here mm -hmm. with you. And we, we checked 15 uh, vendors uh, from the market uh, mm -hmm. on eight languages. And unfortunately, Intalnet is uh, among the worst ones. So. Uh, it needs, uh, their algorithm needs some uh, development. Mm -hmm. uh, however, after our report, uh, some, some tools uh, merge and turn it in, uh, also bought these uh, tools. So uh, Turnitin uh, seems to be the only tool uh, that is reliable, recently reliable, uh, mm -hmm. in addition to uh, Authenticate. However, Authenticate uh, will be part of Turnitin uh, soon. So uh, in Turkey, we are we are happy because uh, we are provided at universities with this tool uh, really. So we have access. Uh, what we need to do is uh, finding some pedagogical uh, supports uh, for this to uh, to to benefit uh, much better from these tools. Okay, thank you very much, Salim Ojan, for sharing your you know insights. And I have to acknowledge that uh, Salim Ojan has been one of the first researchers integrating Turnitin into his classes. Um, you know, back in two thousand and eleven, right, Salim Ojan? And yes, I have been, I have been following Salim Ojan, and I integrated you know, turns in into my classes in 2015, and I've been using it since then. And my students are, you know, they are used to, you know, uh, using Turnitin, submitting their work, and they don't even uh, access to um, their uh, percentage because there is always zero, uh, which I'm proud of. But I'm also checking whether they are 
following the academic conventions while uh, completing the task. Okay, I don't know, Jam. Uh, uh, Mojam, thank you questions. very much. Yes, there are some questions. <laughs> Salim Mojam, thank you as well. Uh, but uh, just to check, are you suggesting that Turnitin is the most reliable tool nowadays? Yes. Just to yes, make it clear? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, uh, uh, the participants, this is an answer for you because I have seen some questions in the chat box. Mm -hmm. If you need a tool to check whether there's any plagiarism or, um, you know, if you want to check your students' work, then uh, as our speaker has suggested and as Sali Moja has suggested, you can use Turnitin. Okay, mm -hmm. so that I is the most reliable source. Yes. Sorry for the interruption, but here we have a very important issue yeah. because I see that sometimes lecturers uh, recommend the use of uh, free text matching software. However, mm. uh, there are some issues related to the use of uh, free text matching so uh, text software because mm. uh, some of these uh, so software tools are cooperating with the other third parties, especially mm. SAMILS on the help of, mm. of, for the promotion of contract cheating. So mm. on one hand, uh, they encourage students to submit their assignments for supposedly checking uh, for the plagiarism. However, mm. on the other hand, they will be encouraging your students to get help uh, mm. by, by paid help uh, with their uh, con contract cheating services. So mm. uh, in Turkey, we don't need uh, any, any use of uh, free tools because we all have access to turn it in. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Ardham Ujam, there are some very good questions, in fact. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So if it's okay with you, I would like to invite uh, the person who has raised the question okay, sure. so that they can just ask the question themselves. Marco Ujam, mm -hmm. are you still with us? You have uh, raised a wonderful question. Would you like to ask that question now? I uh, can't see you right now. I can see Marco Jam as well. Okay, so um, I guess there is a uh, there is a problem with internet tonight because uh, some yeah. people uh, just lost connection, tried to come back, uh, lost connection again. So I guess uh, we are nowadays all on net. On the net so yeah. I guess it's it's it just cannot take us anymore. Yeah. Uh, okay, then let me check if I can find that question uh, almost, because I, I, I don't want it. to. It was like, um, uh, okay. <laughs> Bit Ujum, I, I'm trying you to have find very that, yeah. nasty quotations here. Hmm, okay, dangerous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, people are just saying. My connection is horrible, whatever. Um, I don't know how we can do that. Well, find it. Okay. Here, here. If we have any, any no, other... I found it. Okay. How do you prove that your work or words are yours and no one else's? Do we have to prove it, first of all? Or is um... the person who accuses us of plagiarism should prove it? <laughs> Are we in the court okay. right now? Ojam, <laughs> that yeah, that that's a really hard question to answer, to be honest. Mm. But uh, you, you're not supposed to prove anything unless you are being attacked. That's mm. that's for sure. But if you just trust what you're doing, okay, there there will be no need for you to prove that the work is original, mm. right? Mm. So it's all about integrity. So I, although I have promoted the, the, the concept of academic integrity, integrity is a general term included those values, which I also introduced, like respect, responsibility. If you are one of those people who, uh, you know, um, um, who are known to be a great man of integrity, then we're not questioning it anymore, you know, but uh, some people may question it mm -hmm. and you, you you shouldn't be giving them a chance okay. to, you know, um, make themselves feel, um, let's say, uh, a successor. I mean, if, uh, when, when you just prove that uh, you are original, <coughs> then nobody is going to question it. Okay. Yeah, I hope.
this is also helping uh, Mark understand what I'm trying to tell. Okay. Are you with us? I don't know. I remember. Okay. He, she has raised a, a good question. Mm -hmm. She says, who decides how much of help is the just right amount? I guess um, she's referring to the amount of the quotations. So I like your article very much. Mm -hmm. And I start quoting you, okay? How, how much <laughs> can I quote you? Uh, Hujam, <laughs> Without um, stealing your whole article. <laughs> I, I have no idea whether we have a you know, precise amount of uh, you know, uh, something here, but... Uh, you know, it really depends. If you just feel like it's not not steal, if you just uh, quote like fifty percent of my article, I'm not sure whether you are voicing your own you mm. know ideas in your article. Mm. You know, I can't even uh, you know stand seeing. I hope we are not going to lose you. That's why I'm job. telling my students. Okay. <laughs> I, I can stand losing I, the participants, but now? I can't lose you. Please stay there. <laughs> <laughs> That's yes. It. Okay. yes, yes, okay. you're here with okay. us. I'm so you glad. Hear me now? Yes. Okay. So it you says, were saying if I use 50% of your article, nationally. then it's it's not original. It's not mine anymore. So I should just stop it. Yes, it's not original. And I'm not, yes. Yeah, I'm not voicing my own ideas. Here. Yeah. So, I think uh, the first thing that we need to, uh, you know, teach our students um, is to uh, teach them uh, when to quote and how much to quote. So if they are writing like um, 500 uh, words, as I say, I, I don't really recommend in uh, in this text. Okay. Uh, again, there's 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 uh, something wrong with your connection. Uh, right. So let, oh let me God. just to clarify that. Um, for example, the Thornbury example that you have used. Yeah. Let's right. assume that I do not have any access to that work, mm -hmm. so I cannot mm -hmm. check whether. Thornbury has actually claimed that, asserted that or not. What is the mm -hmm. best policy for me? I do not have the original work. I do not have access to oh the original God. work. How can, can I... Can you hear me? Because I seem to have a problem with my internet. Yes. Um, I don't know, John, can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay, sorry for my... Uh, Internet well, uh, I mean, uh, you, you're not to blame. So you, what was your you're not responsible you from your internet connection. <laughs> well, what I'm saying is, mm -hmm. if yeah. as a researcher, <laughs> I do not have access to the original article or the book. Well, I know the answer. I'm just asking it for the others. <laughs> How should I oh my God. quote Thornbury, for example, 2000 because i do not have that work okay. in my hands okay um i don't okay i okay just uh because of this internet connection i guess we will not be able to have this great um question and answer session uh but site site citations can work in that uh, situation this will uh, put the uh, responsibility onto that uh, researcher I yes I, I you, you I can hear you like uh, a ghost see. I don't know where you are I can't oh, see you right, yeah um Actually, uh... I'm still using the same internet connection, but I think uh, the topics that we have been covering. Yes, that is uh, the curse of plagiarism. Very hard issues yes. that my internet connection can handle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. 
Okay, I agree with them. I think I uh, managed to get what you're trying to say. Uh -huh. If you have, uh, if you have no access to the original source, yes, to, is your question right? Yes, that's true. Oh my. Okay. Um, um, don't worry, Hojap. That's, don't that's worry. so bothering. I know. It is frustrating because uh, we had oh, some yeah. very good questions here. I don't know. Should we just continue trying or should we just give up and, um, I don't know, stop this question answer part? Um, because, uh, yeah. Yes. What about you? I, I, well. I, I don't have any problems. It's... Uh, Okay. Okay. I think something big happening right now. Okay. I'm trying to uh, give you an answer to that question. Hojam, if you don't have an access to the original source, mm -hmm. the, the uh, less risky bit would be, you know, you can say you uh, read the text in another text. Okay. You can use as cited in. Let me just write it to the chat box as cited in Akbar's 2020. I'm not sure whether you can hear me. Um, we can through. hear you just fine, uh, but writing it in, ah, Marco Jam, yeah, is coming back. Most probably he also had some connection problems. Uh, so this is what you're writing in the chat box is an example that we can okay. all use. Um, I, I don't know, Jim, can you see what I've written yes. here? Yes. It seems yes. that I still have the problem. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if I cannot access um, Ersus 20, uh, 2010, mm -hmm. and if I just read it in Akbash 2020, mm -hmm. and I can blame Akbash <laughs> for using okay. Ersus, which is not accessible to mm -hmm. me. Okay, good. Okay. Well, uh, not, so, let's not say blame, but put the responsibility because yes, it's on it, somewhere that, else. that yes. resource is the first to mention that work. So what you're trying to do is mm -hmm. that I'm not responsible. I do not have access to the original uh, source, but I have seen it in some others work. And this is the person who is responsible. So that's why I yeah. love cited in. I love it, mm -hmm. definitely. And please use it yeah. because it is impossible I to have to... access to the original materials. Yes, Adam Mojab. You wanted to say something, Adam Mojab? Definitely you want to say something if internet lets you. But, uh, okay. Mojab, I, I still have this problem, but I'm not sure whether you can hear me clearly right now. Yes. I don't really want to promote the idea of leaving the, um, you know, um, idea of reaching the original sort, source aside. Yeah. Because some people may prefer to yeah. use as cited in, in many cases, yes. rather than trying to reach the original. Yeah. Source. Okay. So uh, you, I really want, um, you know, people. Yeah, I, I, I can I can now cases where they cannot really access the original source. Yeah. I, I can understand what you're saying, but what I'm trying to say is if, for example, because some of these works uh, do not exist on uh, Internet and we do not have zillions of books, for God's sake, and we cannot just go page by page just to find, and yes. some of the original works are not in English. Vygotsky, for example, I want to read the original source, but I can't. I need to use, uh, you know, the ideas, uh, I need to find the ideas in English. So uh, that would be a terrible lie. Well, some of his works were translated, mm. so I can use the translations, but it would be a terrible lie to say that I have reached the original work. Yeah. Uh, can I give you an sure. example here? Sure. I don't know. Uh, by the way, I'm terribly sorry for the internet problem. I don't know what causes this. Don't worry. This. 
Don't worry. Okay. Uh, recently, actually it was in 2013 or 14. Noam Chomsky uh, was interviewed by um, someone from Turkey mm. in English. Then that person, I have no idea who that person is, but mm. that person translated uh, Chomsky's ideas into Turkish. Mm -hmm. But Chomsky uh, rejected that translation. Mm of the interview because the translations seem to include some of uh, you know um, opinions of the translator uh, which do not reflect what uh, Chomsky you know um, um, expressed in in English so, so it was a biased or subjective translation biased, yes. yeah okay that, 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 that's, that's understandable right. well uh, Chomsky himself is a, a, a active is an activist, so I can understand why he had to reject the translation, especially if you're talking about a Turkish newspaper. Whatever, Mark Ojam, I don't know whether you are back with us because uh, Adam Oja has answered your uh, question, so you can see the answer in the video, please later because I don't have time to give you another chance. Uh, excuse me, but I need to go with uh, the, uh, the uh, questions in order here. So Suna Hojam, are you here? Yes, I don't know, yes, I'm here. Yes, uh, would you like to uh, ask your own question? I uh, sure, why? Uh, of course I can. <laughs> Please go ahead then. Uh, Erdem Hocam, yes, Hocam, I was wondering if we can uh, cite just the way we cite in articles, in text, in book citing. Are they the same way? Uh, you mean citing the books? Uh, right. In citation, your articles? No, citation in books and citation in articles. Are they exactly the same or okay. what are the differences? Okay. Uh, actually, Hocam, some publishers, uh, book publishers, they are asking the authors to use uh, some particular, you know, referencing systems like we have APA Chicago or MLA, whatever. So it really depends on the publisher. For example, okay. recently I have seen the uh, the the book published on Meta Discourse by uh, University of Bergamo. Mm -hmm. They use a quite different uh, you know citation uh, you know system which i have never seen before actually so it really depends on the publisher and um, while you are writing your articles it really depends on the uh, the the system the journal uh, is following so you have to check their websites to be familiar with what they're asking. And as, as a someone, actually, Sedat Hocam will also confirm, uh, you know, whenever you get a rejection, you need to change all the referencing system <laughs> when you submit to another journal, right? Mm. So uh, I hate this process, but uh, I have been going through this for almost a year now with uh, a colleague of mine. So it's really frustrating to change all the references, all the in-text citations uh, to the journals, um, you know, referencing system when you get rejected. So Dr. Jan, I think uh, this is something you mentioned recently, right? Yes, uh, okay. Farhat Hocam uh, has a, a, mm -hmm. a question. Uh, well, okay. it's more like a comment. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Farhat Hocam, if you're still with us, would you like to? Uh, talk about this point yourself because then I will take what uh, I'm sorry, Inget Inget, that's your uh, Ahmed Ojam. Ahmed is Ahmed Bashal Ojam. Okay, uh, Ahmed Ojam, uh, I will definitely uh, hear you, but let me see if Farat Oja is here. I guess no. No, because he says um, uh, it, the uh, terms the plagiarism and text familiarity mm -hmm. should be defined clearly because you cannot have a zero text similarity in an uh, MA text, uh, te 
thesis, he says. So, uh, I mean, if you write an MA thesis, thesis, sorry, uh, it is impossible to have, I guess, zero text similarity. That's his clay. Is there anything that you would like to say about this, Adam or John? Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. That's uh, amazing. This is going to uh, really uh, drive us crazy. This crazy, evening, yeah. I guess. Well done. Uh, uh, I'm yes. back. Okay. Good. Good to have uh, you back. Okay. So I think I got your point. Um, sorry, to jump. Uh, so it, it really uh, is of our concern whether it is zero or one percent. Sometimes the journals. Uh, you know, asks uh, ask us to have like less than fifteen percent, but I can't see any difference between fifteen percent and one percent. One percent would be, uh, you know, um, harsher than fifteen percent. Mm. So uh, zero percent is also something, but one percent is also very risky. If you take a very critical point from someone else's work, mm -hmm. and then your text like 500,000 mm. uh, you know uh, words and then uh, you have just one percent of matching and it would be very critical so it really depends whether you have zero or 15 so people have to go through the text but uh, coming back to the point raised by Salim Hoca, Salim Hoca it's the institutional policy mm -hmm. that we have to define for each for for such cases so here we may call for, um, you know, um, a policymaker team, let's say, in every institution to decide whether 0% is not, uh, you know, uh, acceptable or not. But I can't see any problem with 0% because um, there are some cases where people are quite original and they may create, um, you know, less than 1%. But I know it's very, very uh, hard to come up with something like this. Okay. Thank you very much. Amit Ojam, uh, let's uh, listen to you as the last question, and then I will just wrap it up if it's okay with you. Okay. I don't know, John, thank you very much for the nice, nice, great lead. And Erdem Ojam, really thank you very much. You put really great order to uh, confusing the many cited issue. Thank you. I just wonder uh, something about the paraphrasing thing. Mm -hmm. In the chat box, we see something like, let's change active to passive voice or change the forms of the words. I think mm -hmm. paraphrasing is more than that. We are not in an exam like, yeah, they say, yuck deal. It is like restatement. So mm -hmm. paraphrasing is when, I mean, the thing is done related with changing word types, clause type. This is not paraphrasing. This is something mm -hmm. called restatement so mm -hmm. we have to go down to the original idea and we should use our own words but mm -hmm. we can we can also use some words some terms some jargon uh, mm -hmm. in the original idea but at the most important part the mm -hmm. point is that we use our own words, but stick to the original idea, loyal to the original idea. By expressing some strategies like changing word types or changing some type of clauses to other types, mm -hmm. it is not like the one in the academic world that we call paraphrasing, okay. but we just call them some kind of restatement. Restatement mm -hmm. is risky in the academic world. Do you agree with this? Yes, yeah. Hojam, I completely agree with you mm -hmm. on this. Uh, so this was just um, a strategy for novice, uh, you know, authors mm -hmm. who are new to academic, you know, writing, paraphrasing. If you would like, if you have, um, you know, great skills in paraphrasing, you may know what I'm trying to say. Uh, we, we don't need to really uh, go and check the synonyms, but uh, synony synonyms sometimes can help us, uh, you know, while paraphrasing. So we have to stick to the original idea of the author that we want to express here. If somebody says, uh, water is life, and if there is no way for you to, uh, you know, express this idea, you need to direct, you know, quote directly. But if there is a way that you also express it, it with your own words, 
So you may not use water or life, but you still express exactly the same idea without touching upon those words. Mm. So this is a higher level of, uh, you know, paraphrasing. Uh, so so can, can I say, it, add something? Yes, so sure, we sure. need to draw a huge line between paraphrasing and restatement. Yes. Yeah, if the students are led to, okay, you just do paraphrases with some kind of word formation changes or clause <laughs> changes, these does let students to use some paraphrasing tools on the internet. It just, I mean, click of a button and take mm -hmm. the paraphrase. That is not mm -hmm. the paraphrase actually, mm -hmm. that is just a restatement. That mm -hmm. is very similar to the original one. Actually, mm -hmm. in similar to check programs like Identicate or Turnitin, mm -hmm. uh, these are just a similar to check, not plagiarism. Okay, mm -hmm. so we just go down to the rabbit hole to mm -hmm. understand whether this is a plagiarism or mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. and, and the illegitimate paraphrases are the ones that are most of the time not caught by the similarity checkers. Mm -hmm. So okay. we need to pay great attention to here, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I completely agree with this yeah. uh, uh, statement. Definitely, definitely, because uh, people may abuse this idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, Fatima Hoja has written a, a mind-blowing <laughs> remark okay. over there. I, I just don't want to read it uh, because I don't want it to appear on the video. So if you um, like, you can uh, okay. read the uh, remark yeah. over there. Fatima Hoja, thank you very much for drawing our attention on this point. Unfortunately, example, nowadays people have learned, developed very different ways of cheating, even tools. Okay. Uh, but let's not touch upon that. We do not want to teach people different ways, uh, uh, especially as Inged. Uh, mm -hmm. I said Ahmed Hoca's question remark will be the last one mm -hmm. but i can never say no to sedat Ucha because mm -hmm. you know um he's a colleague that i respect a lot so sedat uh you will be the last person to take the stage so here we okay. go <laughs> are you sure Ojan? the last person <laughs> uh guys i'm sorry but i mean it's bedtime come on <laughs> Yes, said that Ocha. Please go ahead. Actually, uh, when I'm talking about academic in integrity, or uh, Adnan Ocha is always talking about academic integrity, and this is uh, mostly the problem about not the students, but also the professors, yeah. uh, associate professors and academicians, because uh, we, uh, uh, because the students are taking us as their role models, mm. and. Uh, for example, for applying to uh, applying to be a, an associate professor, you have to collect some uh, works. For example, three national journals. Uh, for example, five international journals, and the numbers of is also is the only thing that's important for many academicians. They just collect some points, like uh, collecting some points in a game, and most of the time, they. Uh, they always find alternative ways for publishing their articles. For example, uh, for my articles, I know that I waited for two years uh, for an article, but many people say that this is a uh, complete nonsense and they use some predator journals. Uh, they, uh, for example, they publish an, art an article within, uh, within two weeks, within, uh, within a month, and they are the professors now, and they are evaluating our, uh, our works and uh, this is, I think, uh, about the evaluation system of uh, academ uh, academia, I can say that. The professors are doing this thing. They want to be a prof full professor in a very short period of time. And also we get some promotion promotions every year. We collect our words and every year we apply to get some more money. And people are just, uh, they just care about Amazing. the number of the works. So this, uh, since the students are following their professors, they are doing the same thing because they saw this as their role model. And I think this is uh, also very problematic in, in the academy. And, and you know, I always share something about academic integrity on Instagram, on Twitter. Uh, for example, the last one, they, uh, a, a, a journal was sold to, a Chinese, sold to the Chinese people. And yeah. uh, they also justify this. Uh, this was quite a hard work, so we couldn't uh, continue to work on this. 
but uh, these are the problems about not, not only for uh, for students but also for full professors as well okay uh, thank you very much uh, i need to stop recording right now recording. uh thank yes you. uh thank you very much Erdem Ojam, for this a uh, brilliant, excellent presentation. We learned a lot. Uh, well, of course, it gets on our nerves every now and then, but still, this is the truth. This is the reality. We need to understand it. We need to work with it. Thank you very much. We learned a lot from you. Uh, thank thank you. you, my dear colleagues. Uh, you joined us uh, this Bayram evening. <laughs> it's always a pleasure to spend time with you, learn with you, share with you. Adam Ojam, do you have any last words? Do you want to say farewell? And then yeah. I will stop recording. And then, okay. Uh, <laughs> we, we just go to bed, right? Yes. Okay. Ojam, uh, it was, my, you know, my, uh, it was brilliant to get an invitation from you to join uh, in get zoom series because i remember that in 2020 in uh, may we st i started doing the you know instagram ser series with you and it's very touchy actually uh, to be here um thank you very much for giving me a chance to you know talk to people on a topic that i am familiar with and i did my best to cover some issues there there are always things that i forget so forgive me for this uh, but i really like being here thank you very much for being with me tonight thank you again uh guys uh thank you please stay safe uh try to enjoy life i know it is very hard nowadays but we are here we will always stand together take care bye bye